Hi, I'm Joe Weber, and I'm happy and honored to be uh, in this short film for Federation, Atlanta Jewish Federation, to which I've been a member for many, many years. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to bake challah. I've been baking since, oh, probably close to 35 years, maybe even longer. My family was three generations in the bakery supply business. I was the last generation and I sold the company five years ago. And uh, one of our companies, Caravan Products, made mixes for bakers uh, to simplify the baking process. And uh, when I started out with Caravan back in 1970, I got interested in making the products from scratch because that was what I was competing against. And I began baking at that time and experimenting with different recipes. And uh, uh, so we're going to uh, begin shortly with scaling the ingredients. Use a scale as well as measuring cups. Uh, a lot of people don't have a scale handy, and you can do it both ways, although I like a scale for accuracy. So um, first we're going to scale our bread flour. And I like to use bread flour. Some folks like to use all-purpose flour because it makes the loaf a little more tender. But with a challah, you've got a lot of oil in the recipe, you've got eggs, and you've got a lot of sugar, which tends to tenderize the loaf. So for that reason, I like to use uh, the stronger bread flour. And we're going we're gonna, to um, scale 800 grams, which would be, if I used a measuring cup, would be approximately six measuring cups of bread flour. And six measuring cups is approximately two pounds of flour. A little less. So we've got our 800 grams of flour, or six cups of bread flour. And we're going to use a half cup of granulated sugar. We've got a quarter cup uh, measure here, so we'll use two of those. Next we do the salt, and uh, for about every pound of flour we, we use about one teaspoon of salt. Uh, bakers talk about bakers percentages, which is uh, usually uh, calculated on the weight of the flour. So if you were to use a hundred pounds of flour, uh, which an industrial baker would use, you'd use two pounds of salt. In this case we've got 800 grams of flour, so I'm going to use 16 grams of salt, which will be very close to two, two teaspoons. And salt is critical in baking because if you overscale salt, uh, your dough will be uh, paralyzed, basically. Salt kills yeast, which is why you never want to pour uh, your yeast and water mixture directly on the salt, which is why I like to pre-mix the salt, sugar, and flour together, disperse the salt, and then put my yeast mixture in. Now I've got about 12 ounces of water here, of warm water, not, uh, not scalding hot, because if you get over 120, you can actually kill the yeast. Uh, my daughter, who bakes challahs, was wondering why her, when she was mixing the dough, uh, the dough would just lay there, and when her housekeeper was mixing the dough, the dough would rise nicely. And it was that she was using uh, hot water that uh, was so hot it was literally killing the yeast. Okay, now we've got uh, our, our water yeast mixture. We're going to let that sit around a little and get going. The yeast, yeast get activated. And we're now ready to go over to the mixer where we'll add first our water yeast mixture, then our oil, and then our eggs. We're going to add two eggs to the recipe, and we're going to add approximately 50 grams of oil, and I'll come up with a, uh, an ounce measurement on that, too, to be more helpful. Now it's time to do the mixing, and uh, we're going to first do a short mix of the dry ingredients to make some sure that the salt gets dispersed in the flour, because I don't want the salt coming into direct contact with the yeast. So we're going to press the button. And we've got our sugar and our salt and our flour in here. 
Now I'm going to put in my yeast water mixture. And we have approximately 12 ounces of water in there with the yeast. Now we may have to add a little more, we may have to add a little flour, depending on how much uh, uh, water, how much moisture we have in the eggs here. So I'm going to start the mix now again. And we're going to set that for about 15 minutes. And first, I'm going to let the water and yeast mix in with the flour before I add the eggs and the oil. Okay, now I'm going to add the eggs. And the oil. And we had um, a little... Uh, we had between two and three ounces of oil, which was about 50 grams. Two or two, between two and three fluid ounces of canola oil. You could use olive oil, um, soybean oil. And now I'm going to hit the stop button and feel the dough now that the ingredients are somewhat mixed in. I want to feel if it's too stiff, if it's going to need additional water, or if it's too sticky and need some additional flour. And it feels a little bit tight to me, so I'm going to add a little bit of additional water. And as with uh, salt, water is another critical ingredient. You can't add a ton, you can't add too much, because you can all of a sudden get a very, very sloppy dough. And we're going to mix now for about 15 minutes in total. And this is on first speed on this three-speed mixer. It's about looks to me about 70 revolutions per minute. Well, our mix is finished, except for one thing. What I like to do after the dough is mixed is to take about a half a cap of oil, and again here we're using canola oil, but you could use uh, soybean oil or olive oil, and I'm going to put it in there and just mix for maybe a, not even a minute. This is going to help me get it out of the bowl and off the dough hook. And there we go. And I'm going to scrape a little more out of there. And we'll put that oily side down to help release it later when we take it out. Now what I'm going to do next um, is put some saran wrap or cling wrap over this to keep it from getting a skin. And I'm going to set a timer for two hours. And that's, that time will be called our fermentation time. Uh, you can go a little longer sometimes if, you're, if your kitchen is cold, a little less if it's warm. Uh, but approximately two hours is a good starting point. We've let the dough ferment for two hours. Actually, it's two hours and 15 minutes now. And now it's time to make up the loaves. But first we're going to divide and round the dough pieces. Uh, there'll be 12. This was, because we're making two loaves, this was uh, six cups of flour, approximately two pounds of flour. Hmm, doesn't want to come out of there, does it? And these are going to be... Uh, all approximately 118 grams, which I guess is somewhere around uh, three and a half ounces. But again, you don't need a scale to do this. You can estimate it. And we're just going to degas it a little, round it up, and try and work a little of the gas out. When you do this, each step before you make the the uh, the, the uh, long pieces for braiding, uh, you, you keep strengthening the, uh, the cell structure so you get a finer cell, which means the, uh, the bread is, will stale more slowly if the uh, moisture is held in, in, uh, in a finer cell structure. Now that we've divided and rounded all the dough pieces, we want to cover them so they don't skin over it, because once they skin over it makes it hard, harder to work with. And so we're going to put some saran wrap on the, uh, over them, and that keeps them uh, moist.
time you do an, do something to a piece of dough, it it tightens up and wants to fight back, which means that that's why I'm going to wait about 15, 20 minutes before we do the next step of rolling these out uh, before braiding. So we're going to give them a rest now, 15 to 20 minutes. When I refer to skinning over, uh, what happens is as the air circulates, it dries out and then the dough gets a skin on it and then it gets more difficult to work with. So our dough pieces that we've rounded up and de degassed are now ready to be shaped into a long rope type shape which we're going to be able to braid. They've rested 20 or so minutes and they've kind of started to gas up again and we're just going to throw them down like that and knock all the air out. And it's getting a little sticky so I'm going to use, might use a little flour to dust to make it easier to work with. And you want to degas it, you want to really knock the, knock the air out of it before you shape it. That makes the, the dough stronger on final proof, which is the final stage before baking. Fold it over once. Again, and then seal it, give it a bit of a roll out, and then just put it over here. This can be done with a rolling pin as well, and in some ways it's maybe a better way to do it, but I've kind of gotten used to doing it this way. I remember years ago going into a, a Portuguese bakery in Cambridge, and there were uh, about eight guys working on a bench all knocking the loaves down <laughs> and it made this incredible squeaking noise it was kind of neat I don't want too much flour here now as I roll them out a little longer because it'll just slide if I have too much bread flour here or too much dusting flour Try and get them pretty close to the same length so that the, uh, the loaf comes out even and symmetrical. Don't always succeed at that. Alrighty, now it's time to braid the challah. And uh, we've got them all about, I'd say maybe 8 inches, 9 inches or so. And we're going to attach them all at the head here. At the north end, I guess we could call it. Make sure that they're that's sealed pretty well. Don't want it to come undone during proof. And we're going to number it one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now those numbers will change as I do the braiding. I'm going to take the number two uh, strand and bring it over to the side. Then I'm going to take the number one strand and bring it down the middle. All right, now, what was the number uh, uh, two strand is now the number six strand. So now we take the five strand, bring it over to the side, and bring the number six strand down the middle. And then we repeat the process. The two strand goes to the side. The one strand goes down the middle. The five strand goes to the side. And the six strand goes down the middle. The two strand goes to the side, one down the middle, five strand to the side, six strand down the middle. And I'm going to take a little time to do a little uh, maintenance here, kind of try and keep them all at about the same length. Okay, we're going to re uh, recommence now here with the two strand going to the side. This gets harder as they get shorter. One strand down the middle, five strand to the side, six strand down the middle, and I think maybe we can get one more, or two more, two to the side, one down the middle, five to the side, six down the middle, and then we're going to seal them. I didn't do too good a job at getting my lengths perfectly even, uh, but again, you know, you don't have to make a six strand challah, you can make a three strand, or a four strand, or you can just take three balls of dough and put it in a pan if you're going to bake your challah in a pan. So here we have them now, and now we're going to put them on 
sheet pans that are uh, that we're going to cover in parchment paper. Well, we placed the two loaves now on sheet pans covered with parchment paper, and I've doubled up the pan so I don't get too much bottom heat on the challah. I don't like to get too much color on the bottom of the challah. And now I'm going to take some boiling water. I've already preheated the oven a little bit and shut it off. Just about 30 seconds of heat to get it warm, about 95 degrees. And I'm going to pour this boiling water in a little cake pan on the bottom of the oven. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a lot of humidity in there so that the loaf can keep expanding so it won't skin over. And now I'm going to put my two loaves in the uh, oven. And we're using the oven here as what's called a proof box, a warm, moist place. It's warmer than the surrounding ambient air. It's about 70 degrees in this kitchen. And it's about 95 degrees in this oven, which is just where we want it for proofing. And that moisture will again help the skin expand. Now, if you're at home and you only have one oven, and you don't have su sufficient space to create a proof box, you can let the loaves proof right on, you know, on a counter like this or anywhere. You just need to cover it with uh, shrink wrap, saran wrap, cling wrap, whatever you call it, so that the loaf doesn't skin over, because if it gets a skin on it, then it's going to impede the expansion of the loaf for that final rise. And this is what we call proofing. This is, uh, I've created a little artificial proof box here, if you proof it on the floor, it's called floor proofing. And the word proof is uh, kind of uh, significant because if you don't have a rise at that stage, you know something's wrong. So the fact that it rises nicely and expands nicely indicates to you that you've, got, you've proven that uh, you're going to have a good loaf of bread. Now in this proof box that I've created, this oven with moisture, uh, I'm going to set the timer for about 55 minutes and that should be sufficient for the loaf to get expand enough to be ready for baking. Well, 55 minutes have gone by and we're going to check on our loaves now. They should be proof to the point that they're ready for baking. And they look right. They've expanded substantially. And we're going to uh, place them over here on the counter so we can wash them with, with uh, egg. I've broken an egg and uh, stirred it, and I'm going to use this pastry brush to wash them. I've got to get our pan out that we used to create humidity in the, uh, in the oven while they were proofing. And I'm going to set the oven for 315 degrees. And every oven is a little bit different. Some ovens bake hotter than they read. Some bake colder than they read. That's something you really have to experiment with a little bit. And I'm going to take the egg now. This, this is just one egg beaten. And I'm going to brush it on the loaf. And it gives a nice gloss, a nice appearance to the loaf when it bakes. It gives it a nice... Nice uh, shine and, and uh, color. And you can see the dough is pretty strong. I'm, I'm brushing it and it's not falling at all. It's, it's, uh, if it were overproofed, if I'd given it too much proof and I did this, you would see uh, it, it begin to fall a little bit where uh, the, the brush was running over the surface. Alrighty, our oven is up to temperature now, and we're going to place both loaves in the oven. And we're going to set our timer for about 30 minutes. We'll probably need a little more bake than that, probably bake more like 35 minutes but we'll uh, put it on 30 and then check how we're doing. And now we have the finished loaf. Uh, we've cooled it for about uh, 45 minutes, an hour or so, and uh, here it is, a six braided challah 
weighs in at about one pound six ounces baked. And uh, we're done. It's ready to serve, ready for Friday night. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, demonstration of challah baking, and uh, good luck to you on baking your challah.